जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैता चंद्र जय गौर भक्त बिंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैता चंद्र जय गौर भक्त बिंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैता चंद्र जय गौर भक्त बिंद रीडिंग फ्रॉम चैतन्य चार्य मित्र मध्य लीला चैप्टर फाइव verses 114 through 137 okay so let us begin okay text 114 the lord continued i have become very much pleased by the truthfulness of you both now you can ask for a benediction thus with great pleasure the two brahmanas beg for a benediction Text 115. The Brahmana said, please remain here so that people all over the world will know how merciful you are to your servants. 116. Lord Gopala stayed and the two Brahmanas engaged in his service. After hearing of the incident, many people from different countries began to come to see Gopala. 117. Eventually, the king of that country heard this wonderful story and he also came to see gopala and thus became very satisfied when 18 the king constructed a nice temple and regular service was executed gopala became very famous under the name of sakshi gopal the witness gopal 119 the sakshi gopal stayed in vidyanagar and accepted service for a, <coughs> excuse me for a very long time 120 later there was a fight and this country was conquered by king purushottama deva of orissa 121 the king was victorious over the king of vidyanagar and he took possession of his throne the manikya simhasana which was bedecked with many jewels 122 king purushottama deva was a great devotee and was advanced in the civilization of the aryans He begged at the lotus of the feet of Gopala, "Please come to my kingdom." One twenty-three. When the king begged him to come to his kingdom, Gopala, who was already obliged for his devotional service, accepted his prayer. Thus, the king took the Gopala duty and went back to Kartika. In one twenty-four, after winning the Manikya throne, King Purushottama Deva. took it to jagannath puri and presented it to lord jagannath in the meantime he also established regular worship of the gopal deity at kataka 125 when the gopal deity was installed at kataka the queen of pushatama deva went to see him and with great devotion presented various kinds of ornaments 126 the queen had a very valuable pearl which she wore on her nose and she wished to give it to gopala she then began to think as follows 127 if there were a hole in the deity's nose i could transfer the pearl to him 128 considering this the queen offered her obeisance to gopala and returned to her palace that night she dreamed that gopala appeared and began to speak to her as follows 129 during my childhood my mother made a hole in my nose and with a great endeavor set a pearl there 130 that very hole is still there and you can use it to set the pearl you desire to give me 131 after dreaming this the queen explained it to her husband the king both the king and the queen then went to the temple with the pearl 132 seeing the hole in the nose of the deity they set the pearl there and being very pleased held a great festival 133 since then gopala has been situated in the city of katak and he has been known ever since as sakshi gopal 134 thus sri chaitanya mahaprabhu heard the narration of gopala's activities both he and his personal devotees became very pleased 135 when sri chaitanya mahaprabhu was sitting before the gopala deity all the devotees saw him and the deity as being of the same form 136 they were of the same complexion both had gigantic bodies both wore saffron cloth and both were very grave 137 the devotees saw that both lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and gopala 
were brilliantly effulgent and had eyes like lotuses. They were both absorbed in ecstasy and both their faces resembled full moons. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, thank you so much, Rasal Kishnapuri. So let us go back a few verses. Um, they were reading from 114, right? Okay, let me see what purports are there. Very few verses are purports today. 119 has some purport. Yeah, there's only one has something, a small purport. Okay. Yeah. So here we are hearing. The context here was uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling from uh, Navdeep, specifically Shantipur, where he was hosted by Advaita Charya, and he met his mother also, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mother. And so many devotees took darshan of Lord Chaitanya, and they, he spent some time there, around a week or so. And then they danced uh, in Sankirtana while he was there, and they discussed Krishna Arkada also is discussed. And then he, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, along with four of his associates, uh, started going towards Jagannath Puri on the request of her mother who requested him instead of going to Vindavana, please go to Jagannath Puri. That way, it's very close to this place. I get to hear about you, some news about you like that and you will also come for taking bath in Ganji sometimes and some devotees will go from here to go for Jagannath Puri. to Puri. That way, I know about you more like that. She requested and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu obliged to her request also. And then he was traveling on the way, uh, the particular past time we heard, uh, previous chapter, actually in this chapter itself, right? Yeah, in this chapter, a uh, previous chapter. This chapter was about Madhavendra Puri past time also, uh, we heard, where he heard in the place called Remuna. And then, uh, now he came to the temple called uh, Sakshi Gopal Temple. So that, that place, Lord Nityananda is narrating the past time of uh, Sakshi Gopal. And then uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard that past time also. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, glory, uh, the particular, this is uh, toward the end of the past time, where uh, Sakshi Gopal, that whole past time was narrated, where the uh, elder Brahmana and the younger Brahmana both were traveling uh, on a place of pilgrimage. And then they went to Madura, uh, Madura area, and then uh, they got the darshan of the Gopal deity and the elder Brahmana gave promise we heard uh, to younger Brahmana because of his wonderful service, uh, like as if like a disciple doing a service to speech master. So he gave them, um, he gave a word or promise to him that I'll give my daughter in charity to you. That means I'll give my daughter in marriage to you like that. Younger Brahmana initially said, no, no, how is it possible? I'm uneducated, I'm poor, I'm not from a stupid family like that. But then Elder Brahman insisted that he wants to give. Then they agreed that he will promise before the deity, Gopal deity, and Gopal deity will become witness like that. And then they went back home to Vidyanagar after some time, and then it discovered that uh, the Elder Brahmana's family did not cooperate. They all want to uh, die if he gives his daughter in marriage to this poor Brahmana. So then Elder Brahmana, even though he really did not want to break the promise, but he didn't have much choice. He could not figure out what to do. So he just prayed to Gopal Didi. I don't know what to do. Please help me like that. But nevertheless, when they called for Panchayat, the, um, with all the village elders, the elder Brahmana did lie saying that, I don't remember what I said like that. Then it discussed that um, elder Brahmana's son uh, lied saying that this Brahmana is trying to take away money and all that. He, he stole his money like that. Then finally, the agreement was made in Panchayat that Anga Brahmana says, I will call on the witness because Gopal Diti was the witness. I will call on him so that you can all believe me. Then they all said, yes, yes, yes. Some of them said yes because they had faith in Supreme Lord and the deity found the Lord. The, whereas the elder Brahmana's son said yes because he, had a, he was faithless. He thought deity will never come like that. So that's, that's what happened. Finally, they made an agreement on paper and then the younger Brahmana went to Vrindavan is described and then he met the Gopal deity and he convinced the Gopal deity saying that if you can uh, if you can talk to me, you can also walk to me. They will not believe you coming in any other form. You have to come with me only. Then the Gopal deity actually walked with him behind him is described. 
and he was a daily offering one kg of rice is described cooked rice and then uh, finally when he get when it came to the uh, the last session what we discussed was gopalidi finally came to the near the uh, edge of the vidyanagar uh, town or city whatever it is the place vidyanagar he came very close to the edge of that place then when he came at that place that time is described that this young brahmana thought oh now i came all the way anyway now let me see look back and seek to confirm that is really there before we go inside the village and ask, call everybody to come that's but but if i turn around the dt told that he will stay here only but it's okay if he stays here also because they can come and see like that he was thinking then he turned around and then gopal did stand right there only is he said i will not move from here so now you can go and tell them that i come so he calls all the village people and then uh then the sakshi gopal did he uh, bear bears a witness so then the elder brahmana gives in marriage to this younger brahmana the, his daughter so then that mar- after the marriage was happened uh, the lord told the sakshi gopal did he is telling brahmana this is where we stopped last time he told them that you two brahmanas are my eternal servants birth after birth so the purport we discussed last time were they were nitya siddha devotees that means eternally perfected devotees like that so that's what we were discussing last time and then continuing from today so supreme lord in the sakshi gopal dd form is saying i have become very much pleased by the truthfulness of you both so when we hear statements like this coming directly from krishna we should be inspired to practice qualities that please krishna like that because ultimately what our devotions are doing is to please krishna to satisfy krishna so when we know that krishna likes truthfulness we try to practice truthfulness like that and then we discuss in one of the sessions uh, that truthfulness is at multiple layers uh, i think on thursday about and discussion also we were talking about this topic but essentially uh, basically truthfulness in a surface level it looks like not telling lie but the highest truthfulness practice is that understanding that so krishna is the supreme absolute truth and we are in his part and parcel and servants of krishna like that understanding that we need to follow the instructions given by krishna through our guru or through shastra the instructions given by krishna if you practice and try to apply them in our life that is what is being real truthful to our nature as a servant of krishna like that so that's what we should, we as a practicing devotees cultivate uh, the mood of servitude to krishna all the time so that's what we doing so now krishna is saying i am very happy that you are both truthful now we can ask for a benediction so interestingly we can also see from this past time we also will face situations where we don't know what to do one one opportunity we have is to consult our guru and if our guru is not around we can consult our mentor if our mentor is not approachable for some reason then only we go to the next sadhus like that uh, or a senior devotee like that because sadhu is also very high term uh, I mean sadhu is a very usually shiksha guru or sadhu are a liberated platform devotees but at least we can go to senior devotee if you not able to access guru or sadhu directly uh, but mentor is preferred because when we ask a mentor uh, they have a relationship with already with us so we have we might ask some questions already previously with them that way they can understand us more they can understand where we are coming from what is bothering us why are we asking that particular question they, they know that context very well instead of otherwise we have to tell our whole life story this is my family situation this is my current spiritual status i am chanting so many rounds currently i am not able to follow this regular principles currently all those things we need to tell and then i like chanting but i don't like hearing all those things we need to tell the context but that is impractical that's why it's best to, to approach one mentor all the time so that way they know the situation already our family situation they know our uh, spiritual current uh, practices they know how many rounds we are chanting uh, uh, what what kind of faith we have in the scriptures what do we really like to do what we don't like to do what we are struggling with they all know already these things and then what are the previous questions we asked based on that they understand our consciousness also where we are so based that way if you are approaching one person then they can guide us better also but when we don't have any guidance for some reason at a particular time 
you can always pray to krishna krishna i don't really don't know what i don't really know what i should do in the circumstances please guide me somehow then he can give us an idea or intelligence or some something through scripture study will know or some other friend will tell us some other devotee will tell us something krishna will tell through some other devotee like that then we can be benefited like that then the two brahmanas asked for a benediction when lord asked him for benediction what is the benediction they asked they said please remain here at vidyanagar why because so that way all the people all over the world will know how merciful the supreme lord is there to his servants so through past times like this we can learn to appreciate the nature of krishna qualities of nature krishna so sri krishna is so merciful that is doing something unconventional dt walking and coming is not a conventional usually but is breaking that convention just for the sake of his devotee like that so that is a, that shows how merciful krishna is like that so is, this this sort of things past times will tell us that how krishna we should not think him like a judge okay you did this wrong i'll punish you if this is right i'll give you some reward not like that he is a person with qualities is person with uh, merciful nature is very kind to his devotees like that that's what we we'll learn from these verses these kind of past times then when we are doing practice in devotion service we are not practicing devotion service with fear instead we try to practice with some duty at least and slowly it will transform into little bit of love little bit of love little bit of love like that more love will come but at least we'll transfer from fear platform to duty platform when we hear this kind of things in the past times like that so now hmm, of course that doesn't mean uh, 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 i want to caution one thing always balancing it out uh, for a balanced understanding uh, when we are approaching a deity form of the lord who is personally when krishna is personally invited in deity form of lord we need to be really careful uh, that we worship him uh, in the lakshmi narayan mode like opulence mode with awe and reverence like that that is also given for our by acharyas so but still we should not be in fearful mode that is also important point now going to text 1116 is described lord gopala stayed there and the two brahmanas engaged in his service in the deity form from then on uh, when the people around the place heard all about this incident that deity came personally like that to witness they all came from different places and they came to take darshan of gopal deity it seems and then let me see one one in has a little purport then the king of that place also uh, when he heard this wonderful story he also came to see darshana and became very satisfied on seeing the deity and uh, obviously you see whenever all of us look what did king do when he come came he offered whatever he could offer what did he could offer he constructed a nice temple for the deity so, and ensured that regular services being executed like that and then gopal became very famous under the name sakshi gopal the gopal deity who became witness like that so see here another thing we can learn from this also is whenever we go uh, to the temple we try to offer something to krishna whether it's a flower fruit or some money or or at least a prayer to krishna or some service to krishna service to the temple like that that's the mood we will go in basically that means whenever we are connected to temple we do service to our capacity whatever whatever krishna has given us so far as a gift so then see here king is able to construct a whole big temple we all may not be able to construct a new temple but we can do according to our capacity whether it's through money or whether it's through our words whether it's through our uh, hands and legs some service physical service whatever we could do or even some planning things we can do like that anything we can offer that will be nice in service of krishna like that so that's other thing we can learn here that our will is offering service actually while offering service we need to think that whatever we are using to serve krishna is a gift given by krishna only for us actually this was some wonderful thing i was seeing today morning i might i might have sent it to most of you i think yeah you are all in baltimore sadhu sangar group i think right i think Oh, maybe I did not send. Chetan Charan Prabhu uh, had a quote uh, that talks about how uh, we need to 
uh, when we have a ability, some ability, some resource we have, we need to understand that's a gift of Krishna. That is one point he was describing. Then, uh, second thing is that uh, that recognizing that ability, first of all, that recognizing that ability as a gift of Krishna is even more important like that. And then, next is we utilize the gift same gift that ability that Krishna gave in his service like that. I think I'm not doing a good job. I, love, I loved it. I'll find it and send it in this group also. I think it's a nice quote. I really liked it. Basically, the point is that we should see whatever Krishna has given uh, to us ability or resources as Krishna's gift and then engage him in his, engage it in his service only like that. That's the point. So now, uh, then Sakshi Gupal DT stayed in Vidyanagara and accepted service for a very long time is described. In the purport, there is some geography described how the city of Vidyanagara is on the bank of river Godavari, it seems. Uh, and then following verses describe uh, that uh, there was a fight between the king of the Vidyanagara and the uh, king of Orissa. His name was Purushottam Deva, it seems. Then Purushottam Deva became victorious. Uh, and then to, he took possession of this throne, it seems, which is a um, jewel deck, bedak throne, Manike Simhasana. Manike means jewels, right? So he took the throne also. And But now King Purushottam Deva was a great devotee, it seems. Uh, and he knew the purpose of life. So he begged at the Gopal deity, please come to my kingdom like that. That means from Vidyanagara to his kingdom, which is in Orissa, which is a place called Katak, it seems. That's what comes up in the next verse. When the king begged him, begged the deity like that, the Gopal deity was ob already obliged for his devotion service, see. And he accepted his prayer, it seems. Thus the king took the Gopal deity and went back to Kataka. So, does Krishna need to be obliged for devotion service? No. But why is saying that Krishna is obliged? This is showing the nature of Krishna again for us. Krishna is very merciful. Krishna is very grateful also in his attitude. So that way, he is telling us that uh, uh, any service, any amount of service we can do, we don't, uh, he doesn't forget it. So he feels like obliged. He wants to do some reciprocation for us like that. That is the point being made here. Uh, just give me one minute. I want to send a reminder for Bhavita class. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, that is the nature of Krishna. It is uh, he is very grateful for everything we do. Then he reciprocates also. Uh, so basically, devotees and Krishna reciprocate with each other nicely like that. Now, after winning that Manikya throne, the great throne with jewels, right? Uh, King Purushottam Deva uh, took it to Jagannath Puri, it seems, and he presented it to Lord Jagannath. For his use. See, whenever the Vedic culture, whenever something valuable somebody obtains, they are given to either deity or to the king who is ruling. In this case, king himself is thinking that deity is above me. Supreme Lord is above me yeah, because he is a devotee. So, he is offering it to uh, deity like that. So, then when the Gopal deity was also installed at Kataka, it seems, that time, another past time is being described. How? Lord reciprocates with his devotees personally, we can see here. So, the queen of Purushottam Deva, who was the king, uh, she went to see the deity and we, she, with great devotion, she presented various ornaments, it seems. And the queen also had a valuable pearl, it seems, that she wore on her nose. And she wanted to give it to Gopal deity, but she began to think, uh, if, if only there was a hole in the deity's nose, I could transfer this pearl to him like that, she thought. And then she offered his, her obeisances to Didi and she left the place. That means she had a desire and aspiration to do some service to Didi in a particular way by giving this pearl uh, ornament like that. So then, um, 
that night gopal didi came in her dream and began to speak saying that during my childhood my mother made a hole in my nose and with great and ever set a pearl there also that very hole is still there and you can use it to set the pearl you desire to give me so uh, this is a nice thing i can see krishna reciprocates with his devotee's desires in fact krishna is not uh, um, restricted to come only in the dreams of pure devotee he can come in the dream of a neophyte devotee also and give him some instruction of course we need to be careful as to see whatever came in the dream is it in line with the instructions that we already heard or something else if it is not in line we then we check with the spiritual master like that if it is in line we accept it as krishna's mercy not become proud oh look at me krishna came in my dream like that or when we desire to do some service in such particular way krishna arranges things in such a way that we are able to do the service then also we should become grateful to krishna thinking that krishna is very kind he doesn't have to reciprocate with a small devotee like me but still he is reciprocating that way we should develop gratitude towards krishna and improve our uh, motivation and uh, we should be encouraged to do more devotion service like that so instead of thinking that wow look at me krishna fulfill my desire i got this desire krishna fulfill his desire i am such a great devotee like that don't wish not think like that but we should always think krishna is so kind that he can reciprocate with devotee like me also like that that's another thing we see here so the the queen explained the dream to her husband king it seems and they both went to the temple with the pearl and they saw the hole in the knee so those are didi also and they said the pearl there it seems and being very pleased they had a great festival so if you notice the queen was actually wearing the ornament already but still she wanted to give it to the didi so the krishna accepted his love so we should be careful on what we offer of course but in this case we can see the love they have and krishna is accepting also generally when we give to dt we give something that is not used by anyone yet that is the point here but here uh, krishna gopal as in form of gopality he accepted that uh, nose pearl ornament also like this so now then the gopal then uh, from then on he was staying in the kataka place instead of the original vidyanagar place basically and from there he is being called as sakshi gopala that means the dt who came as a witness like that then the last three verses for today so chaitanya mahaprabhu when chaitanya mahaprabhu was sitting before the gopala now the narration of the past time is done uh, and then chaitanya mahaprabhu heard the narration of gopal activities from nityananda prabhu so both he and his personal devotees were very, become very pleased after hearing that past time and then when chaitanya mahaprabhu was sitting before the gopal deity all the devotees saw him and the deity as being of the same form is described so that is elaborated in the next two verses basically both the deity and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu were in the same complex in itself and then both had gigantic bodies and both were the same type of cloth saffron cloth and both were very grey it seems those are some comparisons of course we know lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is krishna himself so it's an apt comparison here so the last verse for today the devotee saw that both lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and gopala were brilliantly effulgent and had eyes like lotuses they were both absorbed in ecstasy and both their faces resembled full moons so we'll continue from the next verse in the next session tomorrow we'll pause here Shri Chaitanya Shri Kamta Ki Jai, Krishna Das Kauraj Goswami Ki Jai, Shri La Prabhupada Ki Jai. Let's offer obeisance to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. Vamsha Kalpa Tarubhishya Kupasundu Bevacha, Padithana Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namo Ha. Thank you so much devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.